I am not an anthropologist. I am not a specialist in history. But this is my history. And they will speak about it. And Mulay Mohand is my hero. And they will speak about him. In today's video, we'll talk about the Lion of Reef, Mulay Mohand, or Muhammad Naibd Karim Al Khattabi. Muhammad ibn Abd Karim, or Mulay Muhand as our ancestors called him, was born in a small village called Ajdir, located in Northern Reef. He had a simple and respectful childhood because he was born in a respectful family. His father was named Qadi by uh, the Sultan of that time, uh, two years before Abd Karim's birth. He and his younger brother, Muhammad ibn Abd Karim al Khattabi, which will play a great role in uh, Mulay Mohand's success, were taught basic Islamic studies by their father at first. And then at the beginning of the 20th century, Mulay Mohand moved to Fez to study in the Attarin and Safarin's schools in order to fulfill the entry level to the renowned University of al Qarawiyin. In the University of al Qarawiyin, he had a basic Islamic studies and Arab lessons, grammar, and he also had a Quranic sessions. All this package led him to be also a Qadi like his father. At this age, Mulay Mohand thought that Spain's intention was to help Northern region, to help their people to be educated, to help them to have a modest but decent life. The father of Mulay Mohand, Abd Karim Al Khattabi, had a good relationships with Spanish uh, powers in, in Melilla and had a good relationships also with the Moroccan Sultan by that time, who, which named him uh, Qadi, uh, the tribe of, of uh, Ajdir. And by the way, Morocco by that time was divided into two portions. One portion taken by France and the, 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 the second portion was taken by Spain. The portion taken by Spain is the Reef region and the desert region. And Morocco was facing a huge problems, huge financial, political problems, and it was not a modern um, country. After finishing his studies, his father sent him to Melilla to be a translator and to teach Arabic and Therifit to the indigenous people living in Melilla. He was simultaneously writing some columns in the newspaper called El Telegrama de Rif, which was a, news, a Spanish newspaper located in Melilla also. By the age of 30, Mulay Mohand was a translator, a Qadi, and an advisor in La Oficina de Ajuntos Indígenos, which means the Department of Native Affairs. While working as a translator, Mulay Mohand became more and more aware about the Spanish intentions to colonize the Rif, and he was aware about the Spanish exploitation of the mining work in Northern Reef, especially in a tribe called Etuzin. In 1914, Mulay Mohand's loyalty to Spain changed because he noticed the unfair power practiced by Spanish troops over the Reefans. And in 1915, his decision became clear. In fact, when questioned by his employer, Mulay Mohand expressed his support to Turkish revolt of Islam against colonials and against European invasion. And he said also that he's fed up with Spanish mistreatment to Riffen region in general. Thus, in the same year, he was put in jail and imprisoned in the prison of Melilla. 
Very sure of his beliefs, Muley Mohan tried to escape from that jail in order to inform Rifan tribes about the Spanish colonial intentions. And the escape tentative was a failure because he used a small rope and he felt broke his leg which left him um, a little bit limping during his whole life. During that time, Abdikrim the father was trying to have an agreement with the Spanish forces or the Spanish uh, government in Melidia. They asked him to renounce on his position about the Germans and to become another time an ally with them. And of course he accepted but he had a plan. So he agreed, the Spanish government freed his son Muley Mohand. Muley Mohand came back to his office and become again a Qadi in Melidia. But this time it's only a matter of few months because Abdukrim the father asked his two sons to join him in order to organize the tribes and to fight uh, the Spanish colonization. Muley Mohand came back to Ajdir and once his home he noticed that some people of their tribes considered his father and all the family as traitors because they are working with Spanish forces. He explained to him his position, he said. He said he was thinking that the Spanish forces was trying to help people in Reef to have a decent life, to have jobs, to be literate. But they couldn't believe him. And soon after that, in 1919, Abdikrim the father was murdered by poison. And until now, we don't know who did it. Muley Mohand did nothing about that because he knew that the real danger comes from Spain. In the meantime, Hernandez Silvestri was named General Commandant of the Army Forces in Melilla. And he is not like his other colleagues. He preferred blood and war to conquer Rif. In 1921, he began his quarry and colonized the Eastern Rif. Muley Mohand gathered all the Rif and tribes in order to begin his war. He also sent a letter to Silvestri saying or preventing him to cross the river Amkran, Aghzar Amkran. Silvestri ignored the warning of Abd Krim. He minimized the power of Rifans and he sent his troops to capture the strategic point of Dharobaran. Many conflicts were between the Rifan tribes by that time, but Muley Mohand had a great charisma and knew how to gather the tribes. They have overcome their conflicts and agreed to resist together in Adrar Qamth in the 1st June of 1921. In the same time, General Silvestri ordered 5,000 of his soldiers to go to occupy Dhar Obaran, which means Mountain Obaran, which is a strategic point to see what happens around the mountain. The Spanish troops went, constructed the fort in Dharobaran and let around 500 soldiers there to resist and the rest of them went back to Anwell. General Silvestri said to his colleagues that he will be drinking wine in Abdikrim's house because he underestimated again the power of Rifan tribes and Rifan warriors. Once the Rifan tribes knew that Dharobaran was taken by Spanish army, they sent a few hundred Rifans with basic rifles to beat up Spanish troop, which consists of 400 people. So Rifans won this battle, they took all the ammunition and weapons of the opponent. Few days later, a Spanish troop occupied again Dhar Igrebun, which is a mountain near Timseman and 10 kilometers far from Anwa. Muley Mohan surrounded that mountain because he knew that they can't survive without water and that mountain doesn't contain any water resources. Spanish army, three days later, sent 3,000 soldiers, began to bombard and shoot the position where Rifan soldiers meant to be. Many hours later, the General Silvestri and General Navarro discovered that this place is empty and they were wasting their time and ammunition. In fact, Rifan soldiers have put a few men in the trench 
And what the Spanish army were seeing, in fact, was a bunch of crossed woods that was wearing traditional clothes and it looked similar to real men. This strategy was invented by Muley Mohand. The Spanish army was basically losing their ammunition, like fools. So General Silvestri ordered his troops to go back again to their initial position, which is Anwal, abandoning around 400 men up the mountain. Riffan army won that battle and took the ammunition plus few hostages. Unfortunately, around 50 Riffan was killed during that battle. Knowing that the main force of the opponent and the majority of Spanish soldiers are in Anwal, Muley Mohand and his companions decide to encircle the Spanish army with 3,000 Riffan soldiers. They used the guerrilla tactics to double their number. And here began the famous battle of Anwal. On July 21 of the same year, Abd Karim Mustawi launched a major attack on the post of Anwal, which had been occupied for some time by the Spanish. 3,000 Rifan Mujahid, armed with rudimentary rifles, versus more than 25 Spanish soldiers, the occupying troops were literally crushed. Between 18,000 and 20,000 Spanish soldiers died there. General Silvestri also died there. Some sources speak of suicide. 1,100 Spanish soldiers were taken hostages. The rest of Spanish army escaped and left behind a large quantity of light and heavy weapons. In 1922, Muley Mohand proclaimed in the Turkish way the Rifan Republic or Dawla al-Jumhuriya Rifia, the Rifan Republic nation. The Reef is organized on a model of a democratic state. Reefans won this war and obtained a lot of that ammunition. They gained respect by humiliating the Spanish troops. And by that time, Spanish army was one of the most powerful armies in the world. And the best of all is that more and more people are joining the Reefan legions of Muley Mohand. Right after that, the French army knew that it will be the next target to Riffens. So they have quickly removed General Lyoté and replaced him with Maréchal Pétain, who won the Battle of Verdun, to collaborate with the Spanish army in order to destroy the Riffen Republic. The Spanish army being intimidated, they have used the mustard gas that was forbidden all over the world to bombard the Riffen regions and the Riffen region is considered until now the region with the highest rate of cancer. On May 1926, Muley Mohand, the Lion of Reef, was forced to surrender and he preferred to surrender himself to the French army. Why did he surrender? Well, because he knew that the war was not any more fair because the Spanish and French army used chemical bombs that were forbidden all over the world. It's like, for example, using the nuclear bomb in um, uh, Hiroshima or Nagasaki. Then he was exiled to the island, the French island, La Réunion, uh, which is located eastern Madagascar. La Réunion felt proud having Moulay Mohan's arrival, especially um, the little Muslim families that are living around there. And soon Abdelkrim's family made friendships with local members around there. Abdelkrim remained discreet all these uh, 20 years that he was in La Réunion. Uh, he used his time teaching uh, Quran, he used his time teaching Arabic to um, the Muslim families around there. And by then, surveillance of Abdelkrim family was reduced. So he bought a small portion of the island that he cultivated. He grew some um, sugar can, uh, lychee, uh, mango and uh, some geranium to to sell and by this he offered a, 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 an income to his family. In 1947 France made a decision to relocate Moulay Mohand from the small island La Réunion to southern France so they can uh, he can live there with him. And the Greek ship called SS Katumba was called for this purpose. Once in the port of Aden, a person recognized the face of Muhammad Abdelkrim Khattabi. 
so he ran immediately to inform Egyptian authorities so that they can know that the SS Katumba that, was, um, that, was, that will join the port of Bursaid uh, is carrying secretly Muhammad bin Abd Karim al Khattabi. A few days later, the SS Katumba was in Bursaid and the Egyptian authorities managed to find Muhammad bin Abd Karim Khattabi and his family in that ship. Then Muhammad Abd Karim Khattabi was welcomed by uh, uh, the king of Egypt by, by that time, uh, who's called Farouk. So the king Farouk gave him um, a, a, a house in Cairo in Egypt, where he lived the rest of his life. You should know that Mulay Muhand had a great influence all around the world. In fact, Che Guevara, Mao Zedong, Ho Chi Minh, and the Yugoslav leader Tito they all visited him or sent letters to him, asking him for advice in uh, war tactics against colonialism. In the 6th February 1963, we lost the soul of Mulay Muhammad. He died in Cairo, Egypt. <laughs> واختيار نوع الحكم الذي يقررونه وإن خصومتنا ليست إلا ضد المستمر الذي يعمل منذ وجوده في بلادنا على انتزاع كل مقوماتنا الاقتصادية والسياسية والروحية And again, I am not an anthropologist, I am not a specialist in history, yet I know all this because I am proud of my origins. Please share this video with your friends and family so that they can know who is Mulay Muhammad.